Well, you're, you've got the banjo, so I'm assuming you're going to do a banjo tune and uh, yeah. another one from the new album, I would assume. Yeah, yeah. I I was good at throw some new stuff on there. I have a habit of playing like unreleased stuff. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to try and be professional and play <laughs> stuff that people can find online instead. Instead of being like, hey, there's this new thing I'm excited about. I always do that. And it's, it's fine. But, you know, I figured <laughs> I wrote these songs a long time ago and they feel old to me, but they're new to a lot of people. So... Um, this song is called Prayer for the Blind. Um, if anyone in Asheville wants to hear more about the song, you should come tonight to The Great Eagle because yeah. I know that we'll be talking about this song a little bit with Travis, so I won't get too into detail about the story, but it goes like this. Pray for your mothers, all that they do. Blind lead the blind, that is how I'll follow you. Time passes on old wounds as if they were brand new. Made in your image, all the bad parts do. Old mom, wooden legs, but you know that she can dance. I know they'll wring her neck if they catch her here again. Over in Omaha, the sky sits on the grain. WNCW Live in Studio B. Prayer for the Blind. Christina Vane off her new album, Nowhere Sounds Lovely. Now, I'm sort of aware of how many instruments you do play, uh, but I was curious, um, and I know this is one of those questions you get tired of getting, but uh, just for the listeners, um, what was your first instrument and how young were you when you when you decided you wanted to learn to play music? Yeah, um, that's a that's a better question than how many instruments do you play I'll say I at least I can let you know a little bit how I got here which is interesting um I started on the piano and well I I started in my crib I just sang a lot when I was a kid so the singing has always been my first instrument I sang in choir growing up um but I you know I learned piano for a while I never learned how to read the sheet music I just memorized everything because I had an ear I guess already at that time and then when I got interested in the flute uh, I, I also, I will say, I don't usually mention this, but now that I'm in the reach genre, I feel like I have to. I did try and play the, at the time it was the violin. It definitely wasn't the fiddle. And I hated it so much that I started skipping my music classes, which is <laughs> like, if you knew, if you knew me the, the next five years, you know, I was obsessed with my flute lessons. Every, every week was like my favorite time was to play the flute and, but the fiddle, oh Lord, I, uh, I hated it so much. So anyway, I briefly tried that because we had one. My brother was really good at it, and um, I didn't like it at all. And then I finally convinced my family to let me try the flute, and that stuck for years. I really loved classical, love classical music and mm-hmm. Baroque music and romantic music on the flute, and um, briefly considered, you know, pursuing that, and instead went to a liberal arts college because I was like, eh, there's a lot of stuff out there. We'll see. Um, and yeah, I sang the whole time I started, I picked up the guitar at 13, which I guess is more relevant to this (laughs) story. 
And um, no, you're actually answering the the question. Okay, that I was well, hoping I you would. Rambly, so just direct me <laughs> if I'm talking about stuff. It doesn't matter. But the guitar. Uh, my brother and I started at the same time at 13 in this little music school in the town in Italy we were living in, and it was classical guitar. You're mm. a very old school guy. We learned our solfege in, in Italian and everything. I did music theory there for a few years in Italian also and took some voice lessons, and that was the only time I ever taken voice lessons, which was really great for me, you know, to have that little bit of schooling. So um, I kind of dropped the guitar because... Even though I was like initially better at the things we were assigned at doing than my brother, <laughs> I feel like he really flourished when he stopped and started just learning rock songs and suddenly he could like solo and do all these things. And I was really perplexed and I had some weird barrier in my brain. And unfortunately, I have to, you know, mention the fact that I think a large part of that is all my idols were men. And I was hearing the rhetoric that women didn't really play and that they didn't couldn't solo as well. And that was like big when you were 13 and talking about music with your friends. So in my head, I was like, oh, maybe I'm just better playing the flute and doing my thing and just strumming chords so mm -hmm. I can sing. And it wasn't till later that I was like, I can do this. Anyone can do this. Anyone with fingers and a brain and, you know, a sense for music can do this. Sure. Um, but I think it, it's, it definitely just sat in the back of my mind because I, I forever was just a rhythm player. And then um, when I met Pete Steinberg at McCabe's, he, he noticed that I was really intrigued by the Travis picking. And he taught me in a true mentor fashion, like never charged me for two years. Every week we would meet at his house and I would learn Travis style guitar with him. And that changed my life completely. So, uh, yeah, that led me to Nashville. And then, like I said, someone mentioned the banjo, and I taught myself how to do that. The slide stuff had happened uh, at the end of college, again, from that band in England that I saw, and I, I also taught myself that. So mm -hmm. I, just, I just wound up here, and now I'm surrounded by amazing players of every color and gender and age and stuff in Nashville where, you know, it's not about that at all, which is so refreshing, and it's just kind of like, you just got to do it. You just got to sit down and get better at your instrument if you want to be better at it, which mm. is the path I'm on right now, and I'm just trying to get like, well. To you the clearly, level of my peers. <laughs> you clearly have the talent, and the aptitude, and you've decided to immerse yourself in it and explore your talents, and that's that's yeah. gosh, that's so awesome. So glad that you are not just a rhythm player anymore, <laughs> and that you're sharing all that talent um, yeah. with us. Do you still pick up the flute at all? You know, I during pandemic I did. I was like, why not? I still have all my sheet music and everything of my favorite sonatas and stuff. And I did it for like a few days and I just, yeah. I don't know, I just put it back. It's weird. I And a lot of people ask if I have any interest in putting on a record. I'm just like, no. You don't want to weave it into what you... No, what? I just listened to... Uh, Travis actually was like, hey, you should listen to Lizzo on the drive there. It was really funny. And he recommended this song that was like a anthem. And I, I heard another one of her songs on that record where she plays the flute. And I was like... Yeah, I mean, it works in this. I don't want to put it on my music, though. It just yeah. isn't the vibe, I don't think. Although, never say never. Maybe well, I'll, you never know. You that's know? what I'm saying. Maybe I'll find a way to get it in. Yeah, later. you may have an epiphany and, and come up with a new style. You know, maybe maybe you work in a, a little Jethro Tull <clears throat> kind <laughs> of vibe into the, the, yeah. the yeah. A little Ian see. Anderson vibe yeah. into the music, you know, a little... So I, I mean I'm just spitballing I'm just, you know I'm just having fun because you you've made the Studio B session so much fun and such great uh, tunes oh, thank and you. yeah it's really good to be here I'm really hoping folks will come out and uh, be with you tonight at the Gray Eagle with Travis Me Book too. and then Saturday is it at, uh, for the Salvage Station Yeah it's Saturday I'm really excited for that I love you know obviously the String Dusters and then Town Mountain are just such great bands they are I, man town I'm mountain so show town mountain show is usually really rocking i I've, I've loved seeing them i've seen them several times yeah there. they've added uh miles miller on drums and i got to meet him in person recently and he's a super super nice guy mm -hmm. and uh i actually am bringing a drum bass and fiddle band from nashville for that show mm. so it's my first time exploring that hybrid because normally until now I've had a lot like sort of segregated the mm -hmm. banjo stuff, even though on the on the record and it, it kind of feels cohesive. But in my real life, I've been playing with the blues trio or playing with the string band. And I'm tired of doing that, you know, especially when my own music kind of has all of it. So this is like the first real set, which is exciting where I'm going to be. I have a fiddle player and we're doing some of my banjo tunes, but it'll have drums and it'll have bass. And I will also be playing slide guitar. So, you know, if you can't make it tonight, which is a very different vibe tonight. There's going to be a lot of talking and, like, 
getting deep into the songs right. and wh- where they're from and more like more roots and folk oriented and then saturday i think we're just gonna rock out <laughs> really well all excited. right yeah all right well you know a couple of chances uh in Asheville. that's right uh, some great live music and we're so happy to have that back by the way my goodness you're you know, me. Yeah. well, you guys, totally. man. I mean, we're all in the same boat. Sure. Right? When this machine stops, we're all just like, oh, God, what do we do now? <laughs> Pretty easy to find Christina online if you want to uh, find out more about her, check out a website. Um, and it's Christina without an H. Thanks for mentioning that. Uh, oh, just I, make it easier for it folks. It does, yeah. And it's Christina Vane, Weather Vane, you know, like Vane like a weather vane. So Christina with no H and then V A N E. But yeah, it's such a. You know, people are always looking me up with the H, and I feel terrible. I wish, like, I was like, should I change my name? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, you're on social media as well. Uh, yeah. So. Very active on Instagram. If that's, like, your preferred thing, that's probably the best place. But Facebook. I did delete TikTok. I can't. My brain. No. I just, I'm not going to get into it. I can't. I'm with you. I can't. It was sucking me in. Hours <laughs> were gone. Nope. Yeah. It, that, yeah. I'll tell you, the, the stuff can be a time waster. Especially uh, for creative folks like you, uh, you know, and you're writing and you, you know, and all that. And that just sort of distracts you away from all that, I guess, in some yeah, ways. it's under the guise of, you know, I need it for, to get people to see my, my stuff. And that's true. But yeah. I was really, I would do that once a week, maybe. And the rest of the time was hours just scrolling on this godforsaken app. I don't want <laughs> to do that anymore. So I deleted it. So unfortunately, no TikTok, but wow. Instagram and Facebook. And then I do have a website and merchandise and all that if you want to support a musician driving around. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for making time to come be with us here in Studio B. And we hope you won't be a stranger. You'll come back and see us again in the future. It would be my pleasure. Because I don't see Studio B going away. Um, it's been going for a while now. And we have Sean Rubin here, our engineer, thanks to you today. And Brenda Craig, she's been uh, taking care of some camera work in here today. So we appreciate them as well. The live Studio B sessions on WNCW made possible by Sierra Nevada. Brewing Company.